In this video, you'll see how to enable AWS Firewall Manager in an AWS Control Tower environment. With Firewall Manager, you can centrally configure security policies for your AWS organization, enforce security rules across AWS accounts, and remediate non-compliant resources automatically. This is a multi-account environment being governed by AWS Control Tower. To get started, sign into the AWS Management Console using your AWS Control Tower Master Account. Go to AWS Single Sign-On to view the shared AWS accounts in your landing zone. Here you can see the initial master, audit, and log archive accounts created by AWS Control Tower, as well as an additional sample account. Control Tower also enabled AWS Config for the accounts, which is a prerequisite for using AWS Firewall Manager. Now let's navigate to AWS WAF and AWS Shield to begin the process of configuring AWS Firewall Manager for the organization. AWS Firewall Manager simplifies AWS WAF administration and maintenance tasks by enabling you to automatically apply rules and protections across multiple accounts and resources, even as you add new resources. To get started, let's designate an account as the AWS Firewall Manager Administrator account. You can designate any account based on the best practices in your organization. For example, you might create a dedicated security account for this purpose. In this case, let's use the initial audit account created by AWS Control Tower. The AWS Firewall Manager account cannot be changed by this account once it is set. Select Set Administrator to proceed. This process is now complete. Next, return to Single Sign-On and connect to AWS using the audit account we just designated as the AWS Firewall Manager Administrator account. Navigating to AWS Firewall Manager, you can see this account now has the option to create a policy. You can choose from three policy types, AWS WAF for Web Application Protection, AWS Shield for Distributed Denial of Service Protection, and Security Group, which acts as a virtual firewall to control inbound and outbound traffic. In this case, choose Security Group. Select the region for the Security Group. Next, type in a name for this policy. This will be a simple policy to allow only SSH connections from a trusted IP range inside a virtual private cloud, or VPC. Next, add the primary security group to this policy. The primary security group can be used as a template for creating and managing other security groups for the accounts and resources within policy scope. Provide a name and description for the security group. Next, select the VPC for the security group. The security group has now been created. Now, let's define a new inbound rule for the security group. Choose SSH as the protocol, and then specify the CIDR block to allow inbound traffic from. Provide a description and then save the rule. Close the page and return to the policy setup steps. Refresh the screen to see the new security group we just created. Select this group and then add it to the policy. You can choose to identify resources that don't comply with the policy or to apply the policy rules and auto-remediate any non-compliant resources. In this case, choose the option to auto-remediate. When you choose to auto-remediate, AWS Firewall Manager replicates the primary security group to all AWS accounts in scope and applies the policy to in-scope resources using AWS Config. Next, specify the AWS accounts in scope for this policy and which resources to apply the policy to. Next, review the settings and create the policy. Note that you must enable AWS Config for each member account and region in the policy scope. In an AWS Control Tower environment, all accounts vended through the account factory already have AWS Config enabled. Accept the terms and then continue to create the policy. When you review the policy, 
you can see all the accounts that are in scope. The first account is the master account configured by AWS Control Tower. By default, AWS Control Tower does not enable AWS Config on the master account, so it is showing as non-compliant. You can see all security groups in this account, including the new security group we created. Within the new security group, we can see the inbound rule. The last security group in the list is the copy of the security group that has been automatically added to all accounts in scope. Now let's sign into the sample account that is also part of this organization. Let's launch a new EC2 instance. Select an Amazon Linux instance with basic configurations. Specify a key value pair to add a tag. Choose to select an existing security group, and then select the default group. This group allows all traffic from the default VPC security group. Now review the details and launch this instance. No key pairs were found. Choose to proceed without a key pair and launch the instance. This instance is now starting up. Notice that only the default security group has been applied to this instance. After a few minutes, refresh this view. The security group we created earlier has automatically been applied by AWS Config, since this account is in scope for the policy we created. Here, you can see the inbound rule that is being applied. Now navigate to the AWS Config dashboard for this account to view the rule compliance. You can see that the instance is non-compliant with the rule. Let's drill down to investigate. The table of non-compliant resources is empty. Let's view the compliant resources. The security policy for the instance has already been remediated, and the instance is shown as compliant. In addition to creating your own firewall policies, you can subscribe to firewall rules from trusted vendors in AWS Marketplace. When you subscribe to a set of rules, these rules are automatically applied to the accounts in your organization and are typically updated regularly by the vendors to address new and emerging security threats. You've just seen how to enable AWS Firewall Manager in an AWS Control Tower environment. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.